This is a 6 liter turbocharged engine and this is also a 6 liter turbocharged engine. But this one makes 700 HP and fits in a sports car. While this one makes just 170 HP and fits in a truck. What causes this drastic difference? Let's untangle in this video. The bore stroke ratio is the key element which decide the engine characteristics. Truck engines are not badly designed, just the thing is they are designed for different applications, for different requirements. Here are some of the things which are different for these engines. But let me tell you, they cannot cause that drastic differences. First, let's sort out with the terminologies and basic formulas. Bore is the diameter of the cylinder, and stroke is the maximum length that piston travels from TDC to BDC. Displacement or CC of a cylinder is the volume in this region. Bore stroke ratio simply refers to the ratio of bore to stroke. The diameter of the circle traced by a crank is equal to the stroke length. And radius of the crank is half the length of the stroke. We require to know this for further explanation. Engines are categorized in three types according to the bore stroke ratio, which are square engines, under square engines and over square engines. Square engines have equal bore to stroke ratio. Hence the ratio is 1. They are said square engines because when they are seen from side view, the cylinder looks like a square. Over square engines have larger bore and shorter stroke. So the ratio is more than 1. With maximum seen in sports cars and F1 cars. While under square engines have bore to stroke ratio less than 1 and least seen in heavy duty engines like the ones in excavators and ships. For comparison, we'll consider two engines with same displacement volume. All of the parameters would be same, but one would be over square and another would be under square. Coming to the first point, why do we see the drastic changes in power output? The reason is RPM. Power developed is equal to work done per unit time. If the engine can reach high RPM, it means it does more combustion stroke in unit time, hence producing more work. As more work is done in unit time, the power output for these engines with high RPM is seen to be more. Now the reason why over square engines have high RPM are number 1. Stroke length. As the stroke length in over square engine is less, less time is required for the piston to travel from TDC to BDC and vice versa. So each stroke is carried out in less time which means more combustion cycles can be performed in unit time, which again means more RPM can be achieved. Number two, when you have bigger bore, you can fit in bigger valves. So more air can go in and out in less time due to the bigger openings available. So suction and exhaust stroke can be carried out in less time, which again means more RPM can be achieved. Next is torque. You might find this misconception all around the internet. Saying under squares produce more torque as the force has more leverage due to longer crank radius. Which is partially right, but the conclusion drawn is completely wrong. For same displacement and all parameters considered same, both engines produce same torque. Here's simple calculation. Torque is equal to force on crank into radius of crank. Radius of crank is long for under square as radius is equal to half stroke length, but force for them is less, which no one tells. Force on crank depends upon the force on piston and force on piston depends upon the internal pressure and the area of piston crown. More the area pressure gets on piston, more the force can act on it. Force on piston is equal to pressure into area of piston. As pressure is equal to force per unit area, when you multiply it by area, you again get the force. When you put this in formula of torque, it becomes like this. So now, if you multiply the area of piston with stroke length, you get the displacement, which we have already considered as same. Half is a constant and pressure is what we have also considered as same for equal comparison. Hence, torque is same for both the engines. Just the thing is, under squares have longer radius of action with lesser force, while over square have more force just with less radius, but giving the output of torque same for both. Now if someone tells you that under square produce more torque, just ask one thing. How does sports car accelerate from 0 to 60 that fast if they don't produce much torque? Moving on to next point. There is one more misconception about under square. That is heat loss in them is less, which is completely false. 
Heat loss in under square is more than over square. Heat loss does not take place just from piston and head of the engine, it takes from all around the surface inside the combustion chamber. If you see, total surface area and curved surface area is more for under square engines for same displacement. When you have more area, more heat gets dissipated which increases thermal losses. This results in less produced power which is not ideal for performance. But it has some advantages which can't be missed out in certain applications. Heat loss in under square is more as it has more surface area in contact with cooling jackets. This keeps the combustion chamber relatively cool, whereas over square have less of it. Also to add up to that, you can't cool big piston and big valves easily as they are moving and they don't share much surface for heat dissipation. This creates some problems, first of which is caused by fuel quality. Normal engines use regular low octane fuel. If combustion chamber is hot and not cooled at certain temperature, it may cause detonation and knocking which is not good for engines at all. While high octane fuel used in sports cars have relatively high flash point, hence they can sustain to that temperature without causing any uncontrolled combustion. But these fuels cost more, hence not generally being used in regular cars and vehicles. Second point, emission. Oxygen and nitrogen are most abundant gases in the atmosphere, but they don't react with each other at ambient temperatures. But when they get in contact with hot surfaces inside the combustion chamber, it gets converted into harmful pollutant called NOx. Emission norms don't allow to produce much of it, hence undersquares are used in most cars to allow heat losses to decrease internal temperatures, hence reducing emission without much need to spend on other technologies to take care of that pollution. Third is cost. When the engine have fiber bores, it is harder to inject fuel to long distances transversely. If the fuel is injected through manifold, then the spray has to cover all the bore. Hence, high pressure is required, increasing the cost of injection pumps. Long stroke doesn't cause any such problem as suction action takes care of the fuel reaching at bottom, while after compression all has to come in short heighted clearance space. If the engine is direct injected, then the wide bore requires wide angle of injectors to spray fuel across it. These injectors cost more. Stroke length doesn't cause any such problem as at the time of injection the piston is at TDC and the stroke length has no role to play at that time. And talking about spark plugs, you know some engines use dual or triple sparks in each cylinder. This is to start fuel combustion at same time across the bore as one spark plug would cause only one flame, taking time for propagation, which is not desired, hence multiple of them are used, but it increases the cost. Then there is heat problem, resulting in cost again. Expensive cars use hollow sodium filled valves for better cooling. I would explain this tech in some other video, just the point to note here is that it costs more. Then hot piston which is hard to cool and if you run it for long, they wear out pretty quickly. In F1 cars, just for some weekend races, 3 to 4 engines are used, which means they have short life. This problem is due to poor heat dissipation causing high temperature wear. Sports cars work at max speed and max power just for some time, hence max temperatures are also for less duration. But our cars has to work for hundred thousands of kilometers. Trucks have to run engine for hours each day, and ship engines have to run for months without stop. All these applications cannot afford frequent changes of the engine. Hence, proper cooling of engine is what you can't miss out on. So more fuel cost due to more heat losses is also a good deal to consider as cool engines can work reliably continuously for long duration without much wear which is more important. Lastly, space versus center of gravity. For better stability at high speed, sports cars require low center of gravity. When over square engines are used, not only the height of combustion chamber decreases, but crankcase also gets low heighted. So when fitted in a car, low center of gravity is achieved. Hence, over squares are used in mostly high speed cars. 
most cars we see on road are under square because most of them are front engine front wheel drive. This configuration is mostly fitted with transversely mounted engine and the power is transmitted to front wheel. Hence, to fit all the system within that tight space, engine should be narrow. Hence, narrow board undersquares are used to save some space in each cylinder as each inch matters there. That's it for this video. This video came pretty late because there is lot of research behind each video. For cool and true information, make sure you subscribe to the channel and enable notifications by hitting the notification bell. Also make sure you follow us on Facebook, the link is down in the description box below. And if having any question or comments, feel free to mention it down in the comment section below. As of for now, I'm signing off and see you guys next week.